MasterChef has come to Ireland in search of the country's top amateur chefs. A gruelling process of challenges that will push each contestant to their very limits. It's the ultimate in cooking. And judging it will be two of Ireland's foremost culinary figures. Michelin star chef Dylan McGrath. It'll be really interesting to see what sort of talent is out there. And restaurateur Nick Mounier. To be able to sort of take and nurture these home amateur cooks, but turn them into chefs. Now that's what I'm really excited to do. From over a thousand applications, nine great chefs remain. Halfway through the competition, and the stakes have never been higher. I'm here to win, I'm sure everybody else is. I would love to win it. I don't think I'd be happy going out at any point, really. Some have conquered. I think it's wonderful. I really do, I really love it. <laughs> Some have failed. I'm not going to stop cooking. I'm going to keep cooking and cooking and cooking. All have battled for their lives. It's a minute to plate it up. A minute. In the quest for the MasterChef Ireland title and the chance to win €25,000 in prize money. They have cooked for the experts. A hake died for no reason today. Tasted of boiled turnip. They have experienced fine dining. I get to see ocean now. Okay, I want let's, it now. Let's, let's. Now. Project. Now. All to keep their hands on their MasterChef aprons. But tonight, only eight will remain. Who will be next to return their apron and end their MasterChef dream? Six a.m. in the morning, and our final nine have travelled to Brook Lodge in County Wicklow, home to Georgina Campbell's Hotel of the Year 2011 and the famous Organic Strawberry Tree Restaurant. Co-owner Evan Doyle greets them and gives the final nine a crash course in how to forage for wild ingredients without alluding to what the task is. Organic foods, wild foods, they're a vital ingredient to the menu on a daily basis in the strawberry tree. But these wild foods and these organic foods, they taste of the season, of the area uh, that they're picked in. In France, they call it terroir. In Italy, they call it locale. Uh, here, I think we call it pride of place. And uh, this is what we're going to set about doing this morning. Let's go foraging. Mom. I suppose my foraging started with my granduncle. He used to bring me out mushroom hunting. So we used to go into the field next door to my grandmother's and we used to go and find mushrooms. And from that then, I suppose, making elderflower cordial, making slow gin, it's a wonderful tradition. You can find stuff that's not off the shelf and it's really tasty. In the French canapé challenge, Christine led the blue team and they lost. And she had to fight for her MasterChef apron in the mystery box challenge. You gotta handle the pressure. You can cook, so don't let the pressure please you. This is such an amazing opportunity. I just feel like I now am in my element. This is my personality in full bloom, and this is exactly who I am. And what you see is my full heart going into everything I'm doing in my ta tasks and challenges. I really do want to make a career out of this, and this is kind of my chance to make that change, you know? This is a, this is a big commitment. I mean, my job is pretty stressful. I've had to take personal leave, and as well as that, like family time, I'd be big into spending time with David and, you know, Yvonne. I wanted a child for maybe five or six years that we were trying. The, the thing I'm most thankful for in my life is, 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 is having him. He's just an incredible gift. Business manager Mary may not have had the confidence in her previous tasks, but she has always managed to wow Nick and Dylan. Great dish, absolutely. The best, the, the dish of the day. Yeah. Fantastic start. Without doubt. Mary now needs to prove that she won't crack under the pressure. If there was one task I would be particularly worried about, it would be the, uh, you know, catering for large numbers. That is definitely challenging for someone who's an amateur cook and who isn't professionally trained. There's only one way to win this competition, and that's, it's a cooking competition. I need to go and cook really, really well for them. I need to show them that I have something that the others don't have, and that's what I intend to do now. Forage over, and now it's time to find out what today's challenge actually is. Morning, guys, and welcome to Brook Lodge, Morning. home to the award-winning Strawberry Tree Restaurant. What a glorious day. 
hope your early morning forage yielded some fine produce. However, not all of you are going to get to work with the fruits of your labor. Today, 300 listeners of the John Murray radio show will be completing a rambler's walk around the Whitlow Hills and then returning for lunch. So there's going to be three different dishes cooked by three teams. From Pierce to Bridgie is the first team. From Claire Ann to Connell is the second team. And from Shane to Christine is the last team. At the end of today's service, myself and Dylan would decide on who prepared the best dish. The winning team will tonight work with Tim Daly in the Strawberry Tree Restaurant, where you will prepare dishes from your newly harvested produce. So we need you to get into your kitchens, and we'll see you very hungry later on. <laughs> Certainly never cooked for anywhere near 300 people before, so it's a serious challenge, and yeah, the pressure's going to be on. Of course I want to win. I think everybody in there is desperate to win. Everybody wants the opportunity to cook with the guys tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, you're very welcome to the sixth outing of the John Murray Show Walking Club. Big crowds here already, great atmosphere around the place. We are bringing 300 people back to the Brook Lodge, so I really hope the MasterChef contestants are on top of their game because the pressure is going to be on them. It's going to be exciting to see, and I can just picture the excitement in the kitchen, and uh, we'll all come in starving, and they'll have to feed us really well. <laughs> As the 300 walkers set out on their trek over the Wicklow Mountains, the contestants are forced out of their comfort zone, navigating themselves around unfamiliar kitchens as they prepare for their first ever mass catering challenge. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Christine, Mike and Shane are preparing the beef dish. They will cook a turf roasted sirloin of beef with a wild mushroom sauce accompanied by roasted root vegetables and a rosti. They will be supervised by Jeff, who will enforce the high standards of the hotel. And then you're going to be putting this into deep trays. So they're going to, going to be lined with turf. And then turf is going to be packed over the top of it. So you're slow roasting it in turf. Yeah. It gives it a real nice earthy flavor. So that's your major job today. OK. That has to be done fairly quickly. OK. How many of this size do we need? You're going to do 10. So like I need to, we need to cut, bone, roll 10. Yeah. Oh my god. OK. OK, brilliant. Fab. Yeah, brilliant. The fish course is being made by Pierce, Bridgine and Mary. They will bake wild hake with a crab and dillis crust. The sauce is a velvet crab cream, and all that is served with summer vegetables and baby new potatoes. Chef James will be on hand to guide them through all that they will have to do. Really, we just have to have the preparation there, because for us, we're going to have to do everything last minute. The fish only takes six to ten minutes to cook. Yeah. The fish team must quickly come to terms with the 80 kilos of hake they have to descale, fillet, pin bone, portion, season, and tray up, as well as their vegetable accompaniment. Basically, if they don't stay close enough to the rib bone there, just on top there, see what I have here, I've actually made a little mistake myself. You know, I'm going to lose a little bit of fish. And if you don't yeah. stay as close to the bones, you're going to lose more fish. That means the portions Wait. you're going to have to get. We're going to get less portions, more, more work, waste. and yeah, more waste and less yeah. less portions, basically, you know. Brook Lodge head chef Tim will be in charge of the pork team, who are making a porchetta of pork loin, crispy copper, roasted butternut squash, and potato cakes made with wild nettle champ. They will have to make portions for 150 people, and to do so must debone eight loins of pork. We're going to take it off the bone. We're going to. Season it up, tie it up, and we're going to cook it in our rotisserie here today, okay? Nice, wow. nice and slowly. Uh, it's going to be really succulent and really juicy and extremely tender. Nice way of cooking the meat. Actually, we've got something that really suits all three of our strengths. The boys have both got um, a good bit of um, experience with butchering and, you know, I'm not bad with the flavours myself. More so than any other task, teamwork is imperative on this challenge. They must all work together to get this done within the time allocated. However, Nick and Dylan have decided not to assign team leaders. They want to see who will put in the hard work and bear the brunt of the pressure. 
Do you need any water or anything? No, I'm good. Thanks. You okay? Give me a shout if you do. Her Anne was absolutely amazing. She's got a great attitude to, to you know life, and she's great fun, and she just kept us really sort of pumped up and really motivated. I'm trying my best to be as meticulous and as efficient as possible in that, but um, we're all checking each other as well and making sure that we're working as team and talking. I'm good at talking. <laughs> During the canapé challenge, Richard's lack of teamwork was noted by the judges. Has anyone got a spare minute? No? Richard? I'm, uh... Are you in the middle of something? Yeah. I think I'm a last chance saloon here. The next time I actually got to cook for those guys, I have to put something really good on the plate or else, you know what, I will definitely be gone. And at the foodies dinner, Connell's lack of attention to detail and slow speed less than impressed Dylan. Come on. You've got three more after that. You've got to really organise yourself now, yeah. yeah? Good man, yeah? We've finally got sweat out of you. Yeah. <laughs> really, there's going to have to be a dramatic shift in pace for everyone. I think that anyone that kind of isn't moving at the same pace to get these 300 could be quite frustrating on their team members. I think that Connell um, could be guilty of that. I think Shane could be guilty of that too sometimes. Pork done. <laughs> oh, that's a clean. On the beef team, Christina's taken on the huge task of making over a hundred potato rosties. So you need a hundred portions. Yeah. So you have five pans on there, six portions. So that's thirty. So you need to do this at least four times. Four times. Four times. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And making rosties for for all of those people is a huge amount of work, I and mean, she quite you know quite willingly has taken that on and is is sweating in there, which is funny to see the other two boys kind of quite willing to stand back and, and marinate the beef and tie it up. I say it was her, her choice to do yeah. <laughs> the, the, the hard... She the just hard. took it on straight away. She, she's a Trojan. Great to see. Shame on the boys. A bit. So Shane, you should be kind of trying to do two things at once. Yep. Instead of just standing there waiting for that, you should do be chopping mushroom. your mushrooms as well, yeah. OK? In the fish kitchen, Pierce has decided he will descale all the hake. I love hake. I love it as a fish, yeah. I've cooked it before, and I think it's a beautiful fish, underrated fish. But Mary is well outside her comfort zone. I don't ordinarily cook fish. I live in you know, a small apartment. My husband doesn't like the smell of fish, so anything I buy ordinarily would be pre-filleted for me. So if I was to get an entire fish and I was asked to fill it, that would stress me out. I think you can achieve anything in life, you just have to put your mind to it. And that's the only option for me today with this team is to win. I'm not thinking about, oh, it'd be grand if it comes second or third. It wouldn't be. We want to win this and we want the opportunity to work in that kitchen. Um, and that's really important to me. I actually have not one doubt in my head that we're going to win today. We're definitely going to win today. Woo! <laughs> there goes the eyebrows. Yeah. In the pork kitchen, the meat will have to cook in the rotisserie for two and a half hours, so they need to get them in as quickly as possible in order to be ready on time. Oh. Having a bit of trouble with the rotisserie, so we're just trying to get that sorted out. We need to get that meat on because, you know, it needs to slow cook. And the shorter time we have, yeah. Grab those uh, meats. Can. No, 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 don't. No, no, no. We'll go up on the counter. Can we clean, get the counter sorry. there again, sir? Okay, hold on. Come out me. Pull the board there, please, sorry. Yeah. The hungry walkers are now halfway through their route and are quickly descending on Brook Lodge. I work as an assistant at a farmer's market stall down in Cork, so maybe not 300 people, but I've sold out curry and rice to at least, you know, 120 in a day, so knowing quantities to feed people is something that I do have a little bit of experience with. It's a, it's a big order, you know, we've got a lot to do. We've got uh, 300 people to feed. The question is, it's one thing feeding people, it's quite another thing feeding people with really, really good food, and that's what we're trying to do at the moment. While Shane's dishes have generally been good to date... He consistently cooked another good dish. Mm. Nick and Dylan feel he needs to push himself more to be able to keep up with the pace of the competition. I don't think I've ever been as nervous since starting this competition. It affects sleeping, eating, everything. Uh, and you're worried about every decision you make. And they're working quite well together. And they're helping each other out. They're constantly checking with each other. Can I get a roasting tray ready for the... You need how many? I need three, I'd say. Done. Meanwhile, in the fish kitchen, the atmosphere is slightly more relaxed. <laughs> no fat butter, yeah? Oh, look, they're 
are twins tall. Can join twins. Maybe a little bit too much chatting when we can push them a little bit more further and they, they get to get their figure out, they should be grand like. Last time I was flirting terribly with his head chef, so uh, if I start flirting with Gino, it's just a win. <laughs> I'm looking forward to cooking in the restaurant tonight. How long has it taken you on a fish so far? It's taking about five minutes per fish, I'd say. Okay, so you're hoping to get quicker? Yeah, I'm trying to get quicker, but I'm also trying not to waste a fish. So I'm trying to be... So you're hoping by the last one, you're going to be like two and a half minutes. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Pin-boned as yeah, well, exactly. yeah? exactly. At the moment, they all seem very controlled. They're all doing their own little jobs. Very slowish, I think, at the moment. I think Mary's just very kind of intricate and you know that's quite merry quite methodical and very careful and that's all that's all very good it's just that there's 300 people on route so i think we're, we're coming up to 11 o'clock there guys we really need to get the fish out of the way now by quarter past and clean down and start portioning the fish and getting it into trays still a lot of work to do yeah yes james yes, yes. absolutely not we're not worried about a thing pressures for tires The pork team are making potato cakes with the wild nettle that they foraged earlier this morning. They've okay, made 16 so far. I've got 110 more to do. So I could be here for some time. I would gladly never see a squash again, considering it's very similar in colour to me. We, we, we could be blending on camera now. And with less than half an hour before the walkers arrive, Christine has had a major setback with her 100 Rosties. She's already had to start a few again because she got a little bit of a head of herself and the potatoes went black. Yeah, well, time is getting quite tight now, so the pressure's obviously building. We're trying to finish the potato cakes. The pork is good, we're, we're just letting that rest now. We need to finish off the butternut squash, so time is getting very tight now, yeah. The fish is nearly done, Pierce, yeah? Yeah, we're getting there. I'd say another, another 10 minutes. Yeah, chef. yeah, we'd like it done in 10 minutes, Pierce, because I, I, I really think we have to clean down and season up yeah. now. With the service, both the beef and the pork team will relocate into the fish team's kitchen. And during service, all teams will work from the same kitchen. Is it really 10 minutes to lick them? When they come over here with their dishes ready to serve up, I want to be sitting with a cup of tea, eating a jammy dodger and going, Grand. OK, you can take these for the washing. This is no easy job for them now because uh, we obviously have hundreds of people heading up that hill on their way to Brook Lodge. They're not sort of going to take any ale food, so uh, the pressure's on. Mary has been blanching the samphire for the fish, but with less than five minutes to go, she takes her eye off it and overcooks it. She now has to painstakingly pick through it and take out the overcooked pieces. We basically had a wee problem with the samphire. Some of it went a little bit too dark on us. So we have more samphire. We're going to blanch off in a little bit of samphire. I think she's annoyed more than I'm annoyed because they should be nice and ready for the service now, but now they have to get more water on. They have to blanch more samphire. Over there, if there's any. Continue on the courgettes, don't worry. While Bridgine takes on finishing the courgettes, the pork team are already on the pass perfecting their serving technique. Potatoes and squash. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to pass it back to Richard. To be honest, I actually wasn't that worried today at all for some reason. I felt, you know, actually in control of the situation. That's a first for me, I'm Master Chef, I tell you. Cooking 150 of their dishes is only half the battle. They now need to serve over 300 people plates of hot food. Today, the final nine MasterChef contestants are in Brook Lodge, County Wicklow, and have the massive challenge of feeding 300 hungry John Murray Show walkers. The hordes of ramblers are on the way, and the contestants are finding themselves well outside their comfort zone. There's 300 people coming in for lunch. So if everything weren't really well, you're going to get 30 people to each pass every 30 minutes. So that means you have to get this plated up in one minute in order to stop the queue yeah. from building up, all right? 
think now that we're getting closer and closer to service, what I'm worried about is plating everything up absolutely precisely, making sure everything looks beautiful. We've put an awful lot of effort into making this meal. A bit nervous. No, we're not nervous, Shane. We're very confident. No, it's good to have a bit of an edge. <laughs> <laughs> confident, but nervous. I think they're nervous about the burnt rosties. No, it isn't. No, no. I'll talk we're Regina. All good. <laughs> Unlike the other two teams who have already cooked their meat, the fish team are cooking their fish fillets to order. Pierce has decided to bear the brunt of the pressure and stay in the kitchen cooking. His attention to detail will be vital. Pierce actually has to concentrate completely on his pans and making sure his vegetables are cooked enough, seasoned enough and uh, ready to go, actually. It's a massive pressure on our team. I think when you look at the other dishes, you know, I shouldn't say carvery style, but their, their joints of meat are cooked in advance and, you know, they had all their veg done just sitting there at the pass for, you know, 20 minutes before service. As the walkers arrive into Brook Hall, the queues for the three dishes quickly fill up. We put a little bit of veg on. That much? Yeah. Hi there, how are you guys? Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Copa's air-dried ham that's made in the grounds. And Connell crisped it up for you. I did. It's hot, it's hot, 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 hot. Pretty hectic. We didn't realise that they'd come in pretty much all at once. And once all the tables were filled, they were going outside. It just was like a stream of people kept, that kept coming. There's a bit of butter in it, but sure, you deserved it. So what we have here is some roses. Uh, root vegetables, and it has a smoked onion, um, which is gorgeous with our beef today. Even selling our dish and, you know, telling them what we cooked and what was in our ingredients. I loved that element of it, and, you know, I worked really hard at that out front because I thought that was what was really important to get across to people. Glad that it's nice and quiet in here. There's nobody bumping off me at the moment. So, I need to keep my head focused. Pierce, you're about to get a little bit more busy, everybody. Sorry? You want to get more busier, huh? Shane, when you're ready, hand back that uh, beef tray and I have some more slices ready for you here. As well as concentrating on the meat and trying to cook the different uh, medium, medium well, uh, well done for whatever the customers want, I got to have in my mind that I have veg in the oven and keep flashing in and out, trying to keep both stocked. You potatoes, do you? Yeah. Did you get some? Are they in the oven? They're in the, no, they're in the bottom compartment of the, of the orange thing. If it's selling well and we forget to get more uh, food into the oven to heat, then we're going to keep people waiting. If people are waiting, they're just going to move to somebody else and get food from somebody else. We need to make sure there's a constant stream of food coming out, that the presentation is absolutely perfect, and that we're working and talking to each other all the time. If we stop communicating at this stage, we won't win, and we really want to win this. Taking their eye off the ball, the fish team realise they've run out of courgettes. And as their diners wait, they have to go back to basics and start shopping. Didn't prepare, pre prepare enough courgettes for 100 dishes. I didn't uh, cut the veggies, but I'm not saying it's not my responsibility. Of course it is, it's a team responsibility. And as their customers wait at the pass, things go from bad to worse for an already overstretched Pierce. Guys, we need some fish out here now. Start talking to the girls more, they do a little bit more for you. Meanwhile, out in the dining room, the walkers that have been served are getting stuck into their much anticipated lunch. However, are the standards high enough for a Brook Lodge audience? The rusty, tiny bit overcooked, but that's the only negative. The bisque certainly is the highlight. Um, I'm not sure about the little crab cake, it's a little bit on the dry side. Well, I had been in the steak uh, uh, line. But when I got so close, um, they have it done very rare. So I switched over to the hake. Chose the pork because I think it was the one dish that was available at the time when you were standing in the queue. Big piece of crackling there. With a huge demand on the ovens and still over 150 people to feed, Pierce's order backlog is growing by the minute. Ovens opening and closing every two minutes and, um, and it's, the, the hake isn't cooking properly because of that. So, uh, so I'm having, I can't, my timings are all off with the hake. So I'm just going by feel now. Sorry? How's, um, how's the veg? No, more veg. You want everything? Not yeah. a problem, sir. Delighted to hear it. Delighted. I'd say you are starving today. Hake, hake, how are we on hake? 
we need? Yep. Done. It needs a minute. Do we okay. really need that now? Yeah. She's out. She's out. And while the fish team are struggling to keep up with their waiting customers, Richard sees an opportunity in the even longer beef queue. Guys, you have to try the pork over here. You've been waiting ages for that beef, and it's definitely, definitely not as nice. This is organic pork, stuffed with fennel. It's got a lovely rub in it. It's slow roasted on a spit. It's absolutely gorgeous. OK, so let's be out. Absolutely great. Thank you. <laughs> oh, fair <and> master chef. <laughs> you've got to keep selling it to people. You've got to keep calling them over and make sure that they're coming in and seeing what you got. Fabulous pork with wild nettle potato cakes. I'll go for that. You go for that. You won't be disappointed. How are we coming along there, Pierce? Fish? Fish, I've got fish here. OK, guys, we need to get going in the beef here, guys. We just need to get no, going in the beef. Let's go easy in the sauce. Easy in the sauce, yeah. that's, that's as much sauce as we have. Dylan and Nick have been keeping an eye on the contestants and feel that both Shane and Connell are not pushing themselves enough. So they've decided to switch their positions in the teams and move them from front of house. Some people were doing all of the work, as usual, so it was important to try and flip that and see how they responded. You two are going to swap. OK. Yeah? No problem. I want you two to swap roles. I want you to stand there and serve people, and I want you to do the backup. Yes. Let's rock and roll. Let's see a second speed, Shane, yeah? OK, okay Shane. There's a tray of Rossi, there's one tray of veg in. Yeah. There's another tray of Rossi cold. Yeah. So you need to get that right into the oven now. Don't worry about the meat. I'll start serving up here. Richard. Pardon? About that? Uh, you can cut it like that, or else you can take it off and then slice it. So either either way. Do you know what? We're just going to get some more um, Rossi's when you get a chance. Rossi's will be there. Uh, give me three minutes for Rossi's. I don't have uh, three no minutes. Worry. OK. And as the judges have decided to take James away from the fish team, leaving Pierce in the kitchen on his own, he leaves the girls with strict instructions. Ladies, I've been told to leave now, so he's really need to get it full there so he's not in the shit. Get more yep. potatoes out, get more veg out yep. so he's not in the shit. Bree needs those potatoes. Yeah, I know. And Pierce is back chopping courgettes again. Keep running out of veg. I'm not getting the feed. Huh? I'm not getting the feed. How are you? But why don't you just do loads more veg? Um, this is how the chef asked me to do it in Why don't we do it your way? Do it your way. We're stuck here sweating in yeah. the engine room when the others are just sort of out the pass enjoying themselves. Uh, don't take so much. Mary's running around like a blue arse fly there as well, getting the potatoes and stuff. If we had cooked things in bigger batches, it would have been easier on us. Um, but I think the quality of the food probably would have suffered as a result because fish doesn't taste good when it's been sitting around. As a team, we, we did exactly what we set out to do, but I think the judges probably felt that we made life difficult for ourselves. As Shane struggles to find his momentum on the prep area, the fish team have been asked by a celiac customer if they could have a fish dish without the crumb and potatoes. Pierce goes out to investigate, pan in hand. Um, we've just had one request for hate. What is that lady allergic sauce. to? She's Celia. Can you get some more sauce from me, please? And it's lovely beef sauce to come with as well. I'm not annoyed to have to do this at all, you know. I suppose you always get special requests in, in kitchens, so this doesn't bother me at all. A couple of other elements of the service annoyed me a bit. Particularly not having enough veg prepared. It's just a little bit irritating. Piers, do we have the celiac fish coming? Yeah, it's coming. Well, how long will it be, though? It's. I'm, I've asked. It's, it's on the way. Five minutes? It's on the way from the other... Yeah. Meanwhile, the other teams have finished their service. It's on its way. I won't forget you, I promise. Promise. The fish is, uh, is beautiful. I was thinking long and hard about having the beef or the pork, but I decided the ultimate healthy day would be a big walk up and down the mountain and then some gorgeous fish. I thought it was three professional chefs competing. So, I mean, on that basis, the food was fabulous, assuming that they were a professional at it. If they're amateur, I mean, it's just off the scale. Really, it was so good. I was on the beef. I, was on, I tried the fish. Excellent as well. And the, this is pork now, I guess. But I'd still go back to the beef. My beef is number one. The day has been a fantastic success. Good weather, good walk, good food, and good company. I'm sorry to wait. Enjoy your meal, OK? OK, thank you. 
Really proud today, really proud. So hopefully we're in it now to, to win it. <laughs> we wanted to let people know what was the best, and we did, at the top of our voices. We genuinely <laughs> thought our food was the best, and we you know, made sure people knew about it. Nothing went wrong, oh, no. nothing. To be able to cook dish dishes to order like that, and for nothing to go wrong, is really well, impressive. Well, The Hick team, there didn't seem to be any real... There was no communication. There was no communication, there was no leadership. You know, Mary's a grafter. I just wish she'd learn how to be a bit more verbal because she doesn't need to... She didn't need to do that much work. That was a lot easier than that. Mm. But she just had to... She relentlessly kept going and she just doesn't understand the power of communication yet. Yeah. But there again, Pierce didn't uh, communicate either. He should have explained, look, I'm under pressure here. We didn't do enough vegetables. Pierce should not have been left like that in the background. Claran didn't move, but she's normally the one that, that does all the multitasking. She seemed to stay at the front. Oh, Richard was sweating so much today. Richard always sweats. Actually. Richard changes colour, <laughs> doesn't he? I love when he gets under pressure. He kind of goes pink. No, he goes pink, and then he goes red, and then he goes white, when he's really worried. Beef team. Beef team. Still seemed under pressure at times. I think it was a good move to swap the boys, because I, I just don't see Shane come out of his comfort zone enough, and it can be, it can be a little bit frustrating. He's quite willing to just rest on his laurels and stay there. With 300 walkers heading home well-fed, the top prize of cooking in a professional kitchen with some of the country's leading organic chefs is now up for grabs for the winning team. I've been to this restaurant before. The food that comes out of there is fantastic and I'd just love to get in there and, and cook in there tonight. It would be a great honour, yeah. This time, I think it went fairly well. Tried to step it up that gear, kept the focus on, did things with a sense of urgency. Well, when I win, um, I'm going to be very happy. <laughs> OK, guys, well done. Great service. A lot of uh, well-fed, happy ramblers out there going away today. Good job. And as you know, we have to find a winner that's going to be cooking in the strawberry tree tonight. So without a shadow of a doubt, the winning team that produced the best dish is... the pork. Yes. Well done. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff. Good oh. stuff. Brilliant. Thank you. So commiserations to the rest of you, and we'll see you all tomorrow in the Master Chef kitchen. Thank you. We were disappointed that we didn't win. You know, we just didn't know, you know, where the other teams were or what they were doing because we were so focused on our own dish. I suppose I always think I'm going to win. I think that's the mentality that I try to have in this competition. And I think if you have that attitude, you're going to do the best you can. We had to sweat it out at the end and the others weren't as pressurised. That was a challenge for us. You know, when you've been working for over 12 hours and you haven't sat down, I think it's, it's very hard to, to not be a bit deflated when you haven't got brilliant feedback. It's just, it's tough to take. The Strawberry Tree produces a daily changing menu of exclusively wild and organic foods. Tonight, Richard will cook starters, Claire Anne will be on mains, and Connell will prepare desserts. I've never um, filleted a wild salmon that costs 20 euros a kilo before, so it's pretty daunting to be um, doing this now. So you need to be really, really exacting with this dish. Everything needs to be absolutely perfect. Three berries on top, needs to sit perfectly on it. I'm going to put a little bit of garnish. The main reason I entered MasterChef was to you know, do things exactly like this. Service, please. OK, service. Service and table four, please. Yes. Thank you. Well, guys, here's just such an amazing day, and it was just fabulous working with you and winning. Yesterday, the final nine MasterChef contestants had a long day. They prepped, cooked, and served up 300 meals. But today, that's all behind them, and they must return to the MasterChef kitchen to face the judges and battle for their MasterChef lives. Hi guys, and welcome back to the MasterChef kitchen. 
You are nine of the very best amateur cooks in the country. And there is no doubt that you can all cook. But in this industry, being able to cook is just one part of the equation. The greatest attribute of being a chef is being able to taste. Today's challenge is a palate test. You will each be given an individual plate of 21 flavors. You will have two minutes to identify as many as you can. Take for granted we're not looking for ingredients like salt, cream, sugar, or pepper. We specifically want you to identify the flavors. So good luck, guys. Thanks. I think if I go out today, I'll be very, very disappointed because it'll be based on my ability to, to taste things under pressure rather than my ability to cook. You probably have about 10 seconds to write down each ingredient, including tasting, so it's, it's gonna be quite high pressure. I think it would be a terrible way to go out, just on a, on a palate test. I, I, I want it pretty badly. Preferably, I'd love to see something Mediterranean, although I think it's quite unlikely. Uh, the general consensus is that maybe we're going to be given something Asian, something Indian. I'd like to think I'm above the average, you know, for palates. Hopefully it won't be something I've never seen or tasted before. Today, the ultimate palate test they will face a dish which includes ingredients from red mullet to chicory, lemongrass to star anise. Some are recognisable and unmasked, others are disguised as mousses, jellies and foams. Most of them they can see, so they should be able to identify them. A majority of them just by looking at them. Then they have to, to double check that they are what they think they are by tasting them. I don't want them to eat the dish as a whole. I want them to literally go after the flavours individually. It would be interesting to see um, who gets the most. First up to face the judges is Wexford man Pierce. Confidence Evans wouldn't be huge today. It's probably the most, the most nervous I've felt uh, in coming into an elimination day. OK, so you've got two minutes to identify as many flavours, and your time starts now. Strong point, I don't think. I think some of the other contestants would have far more experience and probably refined palates than I would. There's some ingredients that they know that I've never even heard of. You got 10 seconds left. That's it. They're done. Pierce, thank you very much. Thank you. Next up is 28-year-old business manager, Mary. So, Mary, you have two minutes to identify as many flavours as you can, and your time starts now. OK, keep... I think I probably am a bit worried. <sighs> you know, we didn't win yesterday, so I haven't got, you know, stars for yesterday's performance. In exams, ordinarily, you kind of, you get, you get stressed out, but um, I've never been in an exam that has been two minutes long, so um, there's no time to settle your nerves. You're just going to be kind of having to perform very, very, very quickly. OK, Mary, ten seconds left. Big push now. That's it, Mary. Time's up, Mary. I have no idea at this point. I think for whoever goes today, it'll be a massive shock. I think there's every chance that I'm going home this evening. Throughout the competition, market stall assistant Claire Ann has been very daring with her combination of unusual flavours, but has been criticised that it's too much and advised to tone it down. Today, we didn't want to smell it, we didn't want to eat it. We're down to our last legs. I quite like cooking with a lot of different flavours and actually have been told off before the competition for putting too many ingredients into my dishes. So I'm not too daunted by the fact that it's going to be com quite complex flavours that we're going to be trying to discern. Quicker, I think. Mm. Okay. 
10 seconds. No pressure. <laughs> Time's up. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh. Just put your name down for yeah. me. Next up is 28-year-old occupational therapist, Regine. So you have two minutes. Okay. Start. Yep. Go, Bridgine. I think I have an average palate. I, you know, I enjoy food. I can, I can taste flavors that sometimes other people don't pick out. So maybe I'll surprise myself and get all 20 and fly through it. Okay, that's it. That's the last one. Okay. Okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd just love to get through this task and actually get back into the kitchen and, you know, put into practice some of the stuff that I've learned over the, the previous task. I should start writing Richard. Ten seconds left. That's it. We're done, Richard. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, all I'll say is it's lucky you did well yesterday or else I'd be going home. That's for sure. Hi, Hi Carl. Hi, Carl. Sorry, Carl. Time starts now. as many flavours. Time pressure is something that worries me a little bit. Two minutes will fly by in there, so, you know, you're writing, you're thinking at the same time, so I think a lot of people will slip up in that regard more than actually understanding or identifying the ingredients. Time's up, Colonel. Okay. Thanks very much. Former vegan Shane is to face the judges. I was a vegetarian for 16 years and a vegan for a number of years. So I suppose that has challenged me and I've learned a lot of skills from it. I went looking at Japanese foods, I went looking at Middle Eastern, and a lot of ethnic foods would be vegetarian based and maybe there's something in there that I could have a string to my bow that other people don't have. Mike is next to test out his palate. I like to taste new dishes anywhere I go, anywhere I travel, and buy a lot of ingredients from Asian supermarkets or, you know, anywhere I can come across something new just to taste and see what it's like, just to understand it. Time's up. Last up is our youngest contestant, architectural student, Christine. Are you ready? I think I haven't had as much experience maybe as perhaps other contestants. I'd love to have gone traveling a bit more or, like, tasted other cultures. I mean, I was watching some of them eating things like the grapefruit. I mean, you can see instantly that that's fennel and that's grapefruit. And I thought they would have been like frantically looking for the flavors that, you know, that weren't so obvious. Isn't it strange to observe Claire Anne? What she's shown us throughout the competition, all these mad flavors and yeah. strange marriages. It was just like she was terrified. Richard struggled so much. Oh, he did, you could I see. I had such hopes for Richard from the beginning. I mean, even 10, he didn't even get 10. Now, Colonel, I think I sort of put in the same category as Richard, in all fairness. Well, he got, he got the same amount of ingredients. Yeah. And he might enjoy cooking, but he doesn't have a relationship with food that some of the other ones have. We're at the stage now where we, we can't afford to carry anyone. Every day matters. Mm. So to actually stand him on a spot today and kind of, you know, say, right, OK, do you have the skills that you claim to have? Um, and, and it was funny who Sean and, and who didn't. And now, our final nine return to face the judges. But for one of them, it will be for the last time. Guys, welcome back to the MasterChef kitchen. As I'm sure you're all wondering what the flavors were used today. Fennel. Star anise. Basil, 
white seedless grapes, pink grapefruit, Thai shallots, olive oil, red mullet, and scallops. And the other flavors in the tasting challenge are chicory, baby cucumbers, coriander, ginger, citrus fruits, vinegar, dill, lemongrass, avocado, and perno. Can I just say that it felt like some of you were looking on the plate for the ingredients that you did know, as opposed to looking for the ingredients that you didn't know? The purpose of the taste test was to see if you could identify specific flavor that could stand up as ingredients on their own. All of you, to some degree, did do this today. However, we were a little disappointed as to how long it took you to establish those flavors, considering a lot of them were very visible to the eye. This really tested your knowledge of ingredients, but also made us very aware of how far you still have to go. Take three steps forward if you identified the main component of the dish, which was red mullet. Unfortunately, I confused the main ingredient. I jotted it down as red snapper, and it was actually red mullet. So um, I was kind of on the back foot. Take one step forward if you identified the secondary ingredient of the dish, fresh scallop. When they called out the main ingredients, the red mullet and the scallop, I realised that if I hadn't got those two, that I was going to be in trouble. Colonel, Claire Anne and Richard, not only did you not identify the main ingredient, you only named the most obvious and the most visual of the ingredients. And therefore, you three are the weakest it was quite unusual when I turned around and realised I was left with um, Connell and Richard, who the previous day I had worked with and had had a fabulous experience. If you got one of the most hidden elements of the taste test, the vinegar, take a well-deserved big step forward. They were looking for somebody, and they clearly indicated that, who could identify the more subtle flavours, things like the olive oil and vinegar. They're the sort of things you'll kick yourself about. The person who got the highest number of ingredients, including Thai shallots, take a big step forward, Christine. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Fantastic. We have taken everything into consideration today, from yesterday's performance and today's challenge. And unfortunately, the person we're sending home today is... Richard. I'm terribly sorry. It's okay. Thank you, Richard. But if you could leave the MasterChef kitchen now and take off your apron. Thank you. I think that, you know, failing in the palate test today almost has kind of brought up for me that I've got to be a little bit more exacting with how I use flavours and not just go for the really big, bold ones and let them overwhelm a dish. I did far worse than that than I thought I did. I think I'm going to have to up my game. I think the competition is getting more and more kind of difficult and intense now, so I think, I think the margin for error is very, very small. In six months' time, if you ask me how it feels to be in the last eight, I'd say it's absolutely brilliant. But at the moment, what I'm really looking to do is get further. You know, I really feel like I've got something to prove to the guys now. I'm pretty disappointed, but actually, to be honest with you, I think it's probably, you know, the right time for me to go.
The love of love and passion for cooking will always be alive. I mean, it's you know in me, it, it's absolutely a part of who I am, and I cook every day for my family. And you know, I've, I've a little two-year-old boy, and I'll be cooking for him as long as he grows up. And you know, I go back to my family and and, and my life, and I, I love that. Next time on Master Chef. This morning is your first master class, and it is with Roger Pizzi. Crushing. You're in a professional kitchen now. You're in my kitchen. You'll walk the way I want you to walk. You're going into a kitchen at MasterChef level, not reading a recipe correctly. It's just breathtaking.